Hello, and welcome to the Application Delivery How-To Series. My name is Trevor, and today we're going to look at how to integrate Advanced Load Balancer into the NSX Distributed Firewall. So uh, at a high level, the integration between uh, Avi and NSX is really a three-way integration. You configure what's called a cloud connector in the Avi controller, and you plug that cloud connector into the NSXT API, as well as the vCenter API. Uh, what this allows for is, as you provision virtual services, so VIPs and load balancers within Avi, the controller will translate those instructions into additional points of integration and automation within NSX and your vSphere environment. So controller will automate the lifecycle of your service engines, it will automate the scaling of your virtual services via ECMP with an SXD. And today what we're going to focus on is the Avi controller will also automate the creation of uh, groups within NSXT and services within NSXT to be leveraged within the distributed firewall. Let's take a look at this in the lab right now. Okay, so you're looking at my Avi controller and for the purposes of this video, we're gonna be looking at my overlay virtual service two. So I'm just gonna show you at a high level what this is. It's a simple virtual service that's load balancing to a single web server. Um, if I go into the virtual service configuration, you can see I've only configured a single uh, port, port 80 to listen. And I've also set the back end um, pools. So the actual pool that's been configured in this environment is going to ultimately be um, an NSX security group. You can see the Avi web pool is here and I've got my one member in that pool. So via the integration between Avi and NSXT, uh, Avi communicates with the NSXT manager API to see when there's been an update or change on the NSX side. To demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is add an additional web server to the NS group. Um, so I'm going to go into my NSX manager, go to my Avi web pool, and I'm simply going to add a new uh, pool member to this group. So I'm going to add my second pool member. And what will happen is I'm going to save this group. What's going to happen is that Avi is going to detect that we've added an additional web server to this group. And then on the Avi side, that's going to be represented in the form of an additional pool member that we're load balancing traffic to. So you make the change in one location, and it can be a source of truth for both the Avi location and the NSX location. It's also worth noting that I've also leveraged this group in an NSX firewall policy. So by updating that in one place, I've simultaneously updated my pool on the Avi side, but also my distributed firewall on the NSX side. So it reduces the number of administrative tasks you'd have to take to do something simple like scale out the back end of an application. And now you can see I have two different pool members. So when I added that second server to the NS group at NSX, Avi detected that change and now we've scaled out the back end pool. So uh, what else is configured via this integration? Well, if I go over to NSX, what you're going to see is not only do uh, we track the actual pool group that I have configured here and allow you to select that as the pool member in Avi. But whenever you create a virtual service, Avi will also automatically create a new groups within NSX. In addition to configuring groups, and these groups, again, are going to hold information about the virtual service that's actually serving traffic in the environment. So now these are the IP addresses of my service engines, and I could add these to a firewall rule somewhere in NSX. Um, in addition to that, we've also configured the actual um, service in NSX as well. So now I have the service that is port 80, uh, as well as um, this other service, and this is for the backend pool that's also listening on port 80. This has all been automated uh, by Avi whenever I created that virtual service. So what I'll do is go over to my distributed firewall to show you what this might look like in an NSX firewall policy. So... Um, what I've configured here is a really simple policy to only permit traffic from um, any source to the VIP that's configured in Avi. And what's great is because Avi automates the configuration of that service, I have the destination of port 80 already there as an object to reference, okay? Now, what if though, I wanted to update this virtual service? What if maybe I needed to add 
a 443 connection in addition to the port 80 connection that's been configured. Well, um, what's great is because we're leveraging the NSX cloud connector, so that integration between Avi and NSXT, if I come in here and do something like, for example, add a new port, port 443, and let's go ahead and make that SSL so that way I can have a, a more secure VIP that's actually presenting a certificate to my customers. I'm gonna go, to go ahead and save that um, because I'm leveraging this integration between Avi and NSXT by changing uh, the port on the Avi side, so the port that the virtual service is listening on, it's also gonna update the service with NSXT that can be referenced in the distributed firewall. So uh, to show you that, I'll just pop back over to NSX. I'm gonna do a quick refresh here on my distributed firewall. And what we should see is this service that was previously only hosting port 80 should now be hosting port 443 and port 80 because that was updated within Avi. And as you can see, what's happened is Avi is updated via that connection to the NSXT API, uh, the ports that should be defined within this service within NSXT. Please check out the other exciting videos in our application delivery how-to series. Thanks for watching.